my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Metal Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for um, a little bit more recapping of the Paris Summer Olympics, uh, the U.S. edition, because you know, from the United States, I'm, I'm a little bit more on the on the bias side of things, and mainly we're going to be focusing on track and field, and now also also sprinkling some of my thoughts on how things have been going. <clears throat> so. Um, some of the other events I watched was the mixed relay, and it turns out um, for the mixed relay for oh, the triathlon, the triathlon mixed relay, um, the U.S. ended up getting silver. And one thing I was again shocked by is I'm surprised we did not withdraw from doing that competition because again that river was disgusting. And also, too, I think it's been a total so far since these games have started four times that they had to postpone any type of swimming events or activities in that water because of the contamination and bacteria levels. I think that's even worse than what they had going on in Rio. I don't, I don't, I don't want to blame it on Paris, but I, I think it's a combination of where they're having the Olympics at and the Olympic Committee. I really wish they would just clean that up and fix it. I'm not sure how they could do that, but again, it still just gets me that we have competition at in Tahiti that's water based, but we can't do the triathlons or the open water swims or any of the other things there. And maybe it's just a type of water that they're looking at, but either way, I'm sure there's other rivers that are not in Paris that are like are outside of France. I mean, outside of Paris that they could do these events in. I mean, for example, some of the, I mean, we all know that not all the Summer Olympics are actually taking place in Paris. Some of them are like in neighboring cities and towns. So it's just, I don't understand why this couldn't be another thing. Like I get, they probably want that scenic view of running by the Eiffel Tower or whatnot, but you know, health and safety, I think should be priority over that. But anyway. Watch in 2028. I'm gonna have more complaints, and it's gonna be here in, in her home soil. So I, I probably should just watch what I'm saying when it comes to that, because probably gonna end up eating my words when it comes to some of the complaints. Um, come 2024, because I'm not 2024, but 2028. Because also the other thing is, for those who don't know, the next Summer Olympics is taking place in Los Angeles, and I kind of don't even understand how that's gonna work either, because. <laughs> the infrastructure of Los Angeles, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I know the people who live there are not going to be happy about it. I'm going to probably try to go because it's going to be right here. It's going to be easy to go, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, so what else is taking place? Oh, controversy when it comes to track and field. There's been a, quite a few things that's been controversial, and let's talk about it. So one of the controversial things that we found out that has been plaguing a lot of the track and field athletes, especially, is that um, there is some strict rules on how they get in and out of the Olympic Village. Um, they're having some of the having some of the people come in through bus versus having a driver, aka Shelly and Fraser Price. So we found out that's why Shelly and Fraser Price was not anywhere to be seen when it came to the semifinals and how and that's how she scratched. It was all tied to the lack of um, organization and how they treat their top athletes. And to me, this is like such a fail and one of the worst missteps probably in Olympic history, in my opinion, because you have a Shelly Ann Fraser Price, who is a track and field legend. She's basically the, like, kind of the female equivalent of you, Usain Bolt. And this was her last Olympics. And everyone knew this is her last Olympics. And you don't do everything you can to make sure she gets to where she needs to be at, on time. 
like you don't have things organized where the athlete, you're making it where the athletes have to like work extra hard to get to where they need to go. Like that should be something that should not be an issue. And apparently um, a similar thing happened with um, Shakira Richardson. And it's just kind of like, are you trying to intentionally put, take these people out of their game? I'm just kind of, I feel like there's this little bit, of, I don't know what that is, but it's just not a good look. And then some of the other things that's happened um, when it comes to like the um, women's um, gymnastics, of uh, the crowd shushing the U.S. women when they're cheering each other on. There's just been a lot of weird things I feel like that's been happening with this Olympics that I don't know if it's an Olympic thing or if it's the fact that it's in France. And how some parts of France, cause I mean, France has hit the news kind of recently earlier this year of how they treat their non-white counterparts when it comes to the film festival. Like that's been a complaint for a little bit. So I don't want it to be that, but I'm a little, I don't know. It's it's a little odd. So that's kind of the other stories that's happened controversial wise. I wanted to get the bad kind of not so positive stuff out of the way. But outside of that, I've been watching. <laughs> I've actually been enjoying it overall. I've been trying to kind of ignore some of these type of things because I feel like probably every four years it really is something like this has happens. Like I think we didn't get that in with Tokyo because well no one was there outside the athletes. So we didn't have all the other particular quirks or weird things that could potentially happen. So I I I wanna be I, I'm trying to not be as critical as I would like to be because I'm trying to think the last Olympic that was really an Olympic was 2016. Because 2021 was not like, you know, your normal thing. And 2016 had their issues when it came to like Brazil. Um, London, I don't think London had that many issues though. London, I think was actually a good, from what I remember, I don't remember any much negative things said about the London Olympics. And then I don't remember much about Sydney being negative, and I don't remember much being negative about Athens. And then I was watching the Olympics, but I was too young to know the no of the no's when it came to the 96 Olympics. So yeah, I think I covered all the bases of the ones that I remember watching. <laughs> and I kind of aged myself, don't do me. Anyway, um, let's move on to like some of the positive stuff though. So outside of that, uh, we had some very, very interesting finals. I mean, interesting finals. Um, so let's start first with, oh, also let's get like the, get some of the gymnastics stuff out of the way. We had this beautiful thing where, um, oh, Andrade, Andrade is her last name. She, um, from Brazil, she ended up getting first place on the floor. And then I believe it was um, Simone Biles getting silver and then Jordan Childs getting bronze. And they kind of did this thing where they kind of black, they kind of did a little bit of a Spider-Man meme slash back black girl magic. And it was beautiful, but apparently there's controversy on that on the U.S. women basically giving the Brazil Brazilian athlete her flowers, but a pin, and I'm just kind of like, what? So sportsmanship's a problem? <laughs> I don't know. I the, the, this year as Olympics has been telling on how people are acting. <laughs> I go hold you. Okay, so then besides that, um, Simone Biles is just, she killed it this Olympics. Um, and I think yesterday was the last day of all that. So now we're going to focus all, mainly on um, track and field. Uh, I did watch a little bit of today. Um, so I'm filming this on a Tuesday. So I did also watch a little bit of the uh, women's soccer um, or women's football. Um, they 
did their, they advanced to the finals. So they did what they needed to do. So the U.S. women are in the finals. And so they're going to either get gold or silver. So considering that they were a new team, they're a newer team and the rest of the world's catching up. This is great news. So that's awesome. Uh, the other thing that I kind of wanted to go over besides that is I think the women's three on three, um, basketball, I think they ended up getting bronze, I believe. Um, one of the women's for surfing, I think U S women's got, um, got a medal. I don't remember which one cause I didn't watch it. Um, but anyway, track and field. Okay. So Valerie Alderman for discus. She was hands down the favorite. She did win. She so she's first American to go back to back gold in field um, for women for that event. So flower, she did that. Um, who else did really well? Oh, um, so Sam Hendricks for men's pole vault got silver, but everyone knew that was gonna be what it was because <laughs> the American that competes for Sweden, who literally keeps breaking his own world record, he, he, he won like he always does, and he actually broke his own world record yet again. So he's just proven that he's like the greatest pole vaulter of all time. He's proven it, he's a goat, and he's so young, and he still has a lot left. So that also happened. Um, I'll put his name here because I cannot remember it for the life of me. Because I'm kind of just buzzing through this. Um, and then what other events were exciting that was watchful and also just great? Uh, the women's 5,000 meters happened. Was it 5,000? Yes, it was 5,000 meters. And that was exciting. So... Um, what ended up happening kind of got controversial and this is kind of another one of those Olympic things. I'm kind of like, what is happening? Um, another thing happened today that was kind of weird too. Um, it's just a lack of organization to me. That's, that's what a lot of this is in my opinion. Uh, so the women are racing and they're racing at a thunderous fast pace they're just going 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 and so um towards the end there was a little bit of nudging happening and the ethiopian woman um i forgot her name but faith kipkagan who's um one of the greatest distance runners out there um kenyan they kind of got into it a little bit um, towards the, I think, second to last lap or final lap. It was right around that time trying to make their move. And Faith Kipkagon actually did almost, she did actually ended up getting silver. And then um, another, oh, I don't remember who got gold. No one from the United States. Um, and then Stefan who I wanted to win, she got bronze. And honestly, I think she was happy with it. It looked like she was really, really happy with her race because Stefan Hassan, who don't know, she's from the Netherlands, but I'm cheering for her because she has the Chicago Marathon course record. She broke it last year. So actually seeing her run for firsthand, she is just gifted. She looks amazing. And she's actually originally, I think, Ethiopian and then moved to the Netherlands like you know, became another one citizen and all that good stuff. Anyway, she's doing the unprecedented thing of doing the 5,000, the 10,000, and the marathon this year for the Olympics. So she got the 5,000 out the way, and now she got two more major races to go. And um, I think the longer the distance is, the better she is. But the fact that she got, she meddled in the 5,000 was kind of a big deal, but she did shut out the girl who was Ethiopian that kind of got into it with Faith Kipkagon. And the controversy, so that's good that Sabah Hassan won. Well, let's make sure we say that first. But, oh, the country, it was another countryman of Faith Kipkagon, another um, Kenyan who won, who won, who got first place. 
they tried to they tried to disqualify Faith from kindergarten, even though she was not the one who pushed the Ethiopian lady. So they show Faith Kikipka and she's like in tears because they try to basically do that. But then they reversed it. So she does, she did get silver. But that has happened multiple times during this Olympics, weird stuff like that. Like even for the women's gymnastics, Jordan Childs. Jordan Childs originally did not have silver, but this was a normal rule. Or not silver, but bronze. She originally was not on the podium. She was originally, I think, in fourth place. And a Romanian person, they said one, but they prematurely said it before they did the review. And they did like a points review thing and they reversed it. And Jordan Childs ended up getting bronze. But poor that poor Romanian lady, she went from thinking she's going to be on the podium to, to that heartbreak. But a lot of, this has been a very dramatic Olympics. Let's just say that. Let's not say it's like all mishaps, but this mishaps and drama. It's been very dramatic. It is like a soap opera <laughs> when it comes to the Olympics this year. But that was one thing that happened that was pretty notable. But it was an amazing race. So I, I highly suggest if you have Peacock, definitely go and check that out. Uh, so another thing happened. Um... Wow. Oh, I don't even know how I forgot this. So what happened today was, actually what happened yesterday was pretty good, but it just I just wasn't as engaged in it. So the women's um, 800 meter race concluded and the, the favorite um, uh, Keely Hoxkins, she won from Great Britain and actually her teammate who runs with her actually got shut out and wasn't even in the final and that was like a major upset that happened but Keely Hoskins she won it was her race to lose because she didn't have um a thing Mo to like run against her because a thing Mo was literally at this point um if a thing Mo would not get tangled up was probably the only one that could beat her at this point um because she's kind of she was kind of number two. So once Athema wasn't in this, it was kind of like yeah, Kelly Hoskins gonna win. So that happened. Um, what else happened? Um, the men's fifteen hundred that was dramatic as well, um, in the best way possible. And I probably annoyed my neighbors when I was watching it. <laughs> so the favorites for this was, um, oh my gosh, of course, when I'm talking about, I don't remember anyone's name. The Great Britain guy, uh, and um, Jacob um, Inkebrinson. Jacob Inkebrinson. And um, the Great Britain, uh, the guy from Great Britain, they were, they showed this whole entire package of them two going back and forth as far as like being snippy and talking about each other because they have kind of been back, been the ones that have gone back and forth. Really, Jacob In Ingebrigtsen has been winning more out of their matchups, but past year or so, the Great Britain guy has been winning. And... I was really annoyed because they're just focusing on them too. And Jacob Inkerbrinson, he's great for the sport because he adds controversy, but he also, if you're outside of the club, AKA any other runner, I, I find it annoying. I will, I will find it annoying. And I love it because what happened <laughs> was the United States kind of put their foot down like okay enough about y'all too but what about us and Cole Hawker upset them all and beat all of them and got gold medal destroyed them at the end and I loved it because also one thing about Cole Hawker is he is a Hoosier he's from Indiana so I was like yes <laughs> one 
thing that is annoying is trash talking, but like unnecessary trash talking. It's like, okay, but what about the rest of the field though? And then Yars Nagus, who is also an American, he got bronze. Um, I was kind of thinking that it was going to happen that way, mainly because Jacob Ickebrinson, what he did, he did a gutsy race. I will give him that. This race was gutsy as all get out. He decided that they were going to be running world record pace almost the whole entire time, which they did. But he, that was his detriment though, because apparently he didn't realize Cole Hawker's on this field. Cole Hawker has a strong kick and you running this fast pace is not going to kill his kick. And it didn't. It didn't kill his kick at all. And we found out today that his kick is stronger than everyone else's on the field when he's healthy. The thing is, Cole Hawker has not been healthy since he's really became, um, became pro. And this is the year that he's healthy and they just kind of, I think now they're going to be paying more attention to him. Um, Yaris the Goose, he's a great, talented runner, but his kick is not the best. But he fought back for the first time. I've never seen him fight back the way he did. Normally he fades when he's trying to, like, you know, fight. And this time he, he stood his ground because all the way up to the end, it was like, it was another, it was some Kenyan. I, 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 and, and forgive me, I don't remember the guy's name. It was a Kenyan. Um, athlete, and then you had um, the guy from Great Britain, and then you had Jacob Inkebrinson, who's Norwegian, and they were the ones that were like kind of leading the race the whole entire time. And, and the Americans, all three of them, they actually did their thing. All three of them did their thing because um, Kessler was in the race too. He actually ended up getting fifth place, um, I think. I, I believe he got fifth, fourth or fifth. He either got fourth or fifth. But they did what I wanted them to really do. I've said this so many times when all U.S. people are in the finals when it comes to this mid-distance running um, and track and field. I want them to act like the African athletes and team up and get it done. And they actually kind of did it that way. And man... Whoever coached them once they were there, they did that. They did that. Because they made sure that they had at least two out of three on the, on the podium. And Kessler, um, Joe Kessler, I think he could have. Um, he's, he's very, um, that's not his stronger distance. His stronger distance is the um, 800. So I'm not sure I guess I wasn't sure. I think he was boxed in, so he couldn't really make a move. That's the only thing I could think of. I'll have to rewatch and see what happened there. But the fact that they made sure Jacob Ickebrinson, because of everyone, he is the biggest trash talker. Like, okay, let me say this, because there's a whole bunch of athletes that are on this, that are here, that are, they talk their big ones, right? The difference is his sometimes borderline comes off as arrogant, not necessarily confident. It comes off arrogant a little bit. So for me, I love that. <laughs> I, I loved it. I loved it. It also added some drama to the sport. And the guy from Great Britain, I know, hold you. It seemed like he was tickled that Jacob Inkebrinson wasn't even on the podium because he don't like that dude. <laughs> Part of the rivalry is the fact that actually, you could tell they legitimately do not like each other. And so it made it even better because you could tell he was, he was, he wasn't happy that he didn't win, but he at least hung, hung on for silver. Okay. He still got silver. He still, he was still in the club. So that was the other drama that happened. But man, again, if you're a fan of mid-distance running, watch it. It was it was entertaining. I was I was entertained. <laughs> Lastly, the race that was amazing. Amazing. 
and I'm glad she did what she needed to do. The 200 meter women's final. Um, it was it was the it was the main event on tra for track and field, and we had Gabby Thomas, we had Julian Alford, who's the newly crowned 100 meter um, Olympic champion for, in Paris for you know, for that event. She was doing the back to back. And then you also had two other American. So it was it was a stacked field. So because you also had um, oh, uh, Dina Asher Smith. She's a strong um, sprinter from the great from Great Britain. Um, we also had um, Nadita, who's also a strong. She's probably actually the stronger one of the Great Britain. Um, sprinter athletes. It used to be reverse, but now lately it's been the opposite. Um, so the one and two basically of Great Britain. Um, we also had, um, you had all three Americans there. So we also had, um, Brittany Brown, I want to say, and Michaela. The one whose mom passed away, she was on this, she was in this final as well. But the favorite was Gabby Thomas. And Gabby Thomas showed why she was a favorite. She killed it. I was like, that was the strongest I have ever seen Gabby Thomas run. Honestly, sec no, it was the strongest because last time she... She, it, it, it seems like the past year or so, Gabby Thomas is finally, her races are coming together. And it's taken a while for them to come together. Oh, and side note, back to the um, 1500 meter final. That was the first time I think in like 20 or 40 or 60, it was a long time. It, it was the first time in a very, very long time that all three Americans were in a, in a final for the Olympics. So that was already a feat in self that all three Americans were there for the finals. So I'm just kind of proud that Americans mid-distance running is finally, it looks like it's finally coming together. Um, it, it hasn't been coming together for a while and it looks like it's finally getting there. We usually have one or two great runners and that's it. But this, we're, we're getting there. But anyway, so back to the 200. The last time, oh, so... If you haven't figured out, Gabby Thomas won. Okay. And the last time the Americans won is Alex and Felix. And that was 12 years ago. So in London, that was the last time. The 2012 Olympics. And so to see that Gabby Thomas did it too, but she did it definitively. The way she looked, she was almost looking like, um, oh, Sydney McLaughlin. Sydney McLaughlin Lombroni. That's how she was looking. Like the field, the rest of the field was over here. Second place, which was Julianne um, Alford, was not catching her. Because the way Gabby Thomas ran her down at the very beginning, and then the thing that's beautiful about Gabby Thomas' 200 run, and honestly, I think, honestly, if she ever wanted to, I think Gabby Thomas could be a runner that could move up to the 400s because she is a very strong runner and she's built more like a 400 meter runner versus a 200 meter runner. But we do need a 200 meter star. Like she's kind of built very similar to Allison Felix. Um, so even though Gabby Thomas does do the hundreds, it's not, it never has been her stronger event. Um, and I'm glad that she did make the decision very, very earlier on in the U.S. Olympic trial. She was just going to focus on the 200 because it paid off. It paid off because she did that first hundred. The way she did that first hundred, she ran Julian Alford down and Julian and Julian Alford clearly is a hundred meter runner, but ran her down, made her look like she wasn't. And then that second half, she killed it. She, she did her normal race and no one was catching her. She was gone. Julian Alfred got silver and then Brittany Brown got bronze. So it was, um, 
U United States, St. Lucia, United States. So that was what happened with that. And I'll, I'll continue to like kind of give you a little bit here and there with what's going on with track and field. I'm watching a lot of it. But that pretty much does conclude the video, though. Uh, I know this is my been a longer video than what I originally planned. But anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. <laughs> Look at zero. It's your girl, Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.